This is the greatest astrophotography lens of all time. The Sigma 14 millimeter F 1.4, a bright, fast aperture that's two thirds of a stop faster than the standard F 1.8 lenses. I'm going to compare it against Sigma's own 14 millimeter F 1.8, which is the closest comparison I really have. First, a shout out to our sponsor, Adorama. No matter which lens you decide to buy, uh, head to this link and help support Adorama because Adorama is made of creators like you and me. They understand us way better than some big box store does. They provide fast shipping. They give you free accessories often. And with every purchase, I get VIP points. You too should sign up for their VIP plan. And the next time you buy something, you'll get cash back. Before I get into the side-by-side -side technical comparisons, I really want to talk about the design of this lens. I mean, first, it's it's absolutely massive. Like, compare it to Sony's 20 millimeter F 1.8 G. And well, the difference is absolutely huge, but it has to be huge to gather so much light, right? Look at the aperture ring here, a nice physical aperture ring with clicks, or you can turn the clicks off in case you want to smoothly adjust the aperture in video. And it has a programmable button there. And of course you can switch between manual and autofocus on the lens. And the manual focus ring is absolutely massive and nice and smooth. Because of the size of the lens, Sigma has included a collar on it. So you can mount it directly to a tripod and it has a quick release plate built into it. So you won't need to add your own quick release plate for most types of tripods. I really like the built-in collar because it allows me to rotate the lens between horizontal and vertical without having to rotate my ball head. Now, a 14 millimeter lens is very niche. It is extremely wide angle and there aren't many circumstances that would call for being at 14 millimeters with a really fast aperture. There's really one main use for this and it's Milky Way photography. 14 millimeters allows you to capture landscape in the foreground and the entire shape of the Milky Way. And if that's something you're into, this is the greatest lens in the world for it. And $1,600 is a pretty fair price. You could get an ultra wide zoom lens and do astrophotography with that. But let me show you the difference that a fast F1.4 aperture makes. You can see versus a standard F2.8 zoom lens, there's so much more noise that it's visible even zoomed back. F1.4 is gathering four times more light than F2.8, and that's obvious. The grain in the F2.8 image is bigger and chunkier, and there's just far less detail. Look at the difference between the F1.4 lens and your F4 zoom. There's not just more noise, but details are completely lost in the shadows. And this is what F1.4 would look like versus your F5.6 zoom. There's no competition. Now let's take a look at the sharpness differences between the two Sigma lenses. These images both have Lightroom Chromatic Aberration removal enabled, but you can see the new lens has virtually no purple fringing while the old lens has a ton of it. Looking at the sharpness in the center, the new lens is far sharper, allowing you to see the texture of the printing and the cardboard, which the old lens mostly blurs out. And in the corners, again, the new lens significantly sharper than the old F1.8 lens. For consistency between the lenses, that last comparison was at f1.8, but let's look at f1.4 versus f1.8 on the new Sigma. You can see f1.4 is not quite as sharp as f1.8. Lenses usually do get a little bit sharper when you shut down. That holds true in the corners too. Now let's go into the photo studio and I'll turn on my Adorama Flashpoint strobe and fire it directly into the lens through a mannequin's hair. This tests the contrast and flaring of the different lenses. This is useful if you're shooting sunrises or sunsets where you might be shooting directly into the sun. Compared to Sigma's 14 millimeter F1.8, we can see better contrast on the new lens. The light has less bloom and the face here is darker, indicating there was less light reflected off the lens elements. Now, the most important test here is going to be astrophotography. How do they render the stars? What about qualities like coma and the brightness of the lens in low light? On a good day, that's hard for me to test here in southeastern Connecticut because the skies are not dark. It's a fairly urban area. But the fires in Canada have completely smoked out our sky. It's a clear day today, but look, you can just like barely see the sun. And when I tried to do astrophotography, it was impossible. I couldn't see the stars. So just for you, I set up a simulated star field using fairy lights. It's not a perfect comparison. I wish I had perfect pinpoint lights, but this is the best I can do. 
It was good enough to tell us how each of the lenses handled small points of light in an astrophotography scenario. Look how much brighter the F1.4 scene is than we can get with our F1.8 lenses. Uh, let's zoom in and check the quality of the light. Even wide open, we can see the new Sigma is significantly clearer than the old Sigma. And in the corners too, the new Sigma is much crisper. One more test, I wanted to check the bokeh qualities of each lens. You probably won't be looking at huge bokeh balls in many scenarios with these, but they are fast primes. So let's see what it looks like when something's out of focus. Comparing the bokeh at infinity, we can see the bokeh balls on the F1.4 lens are significantly bigger. They're also a little bit rounder and I think a little bit smoother. So in summary, should you get the Sigma 14 millimeter F1.4? Well, I currently own the Sigma 14 millimeter F1.8 for things like Milky Way photography and my upcoming trip to photograph the Aurora Borealis. This new lens gives me two thirds of a stop more light. That's way more light that will produce cleaner, better images. And overall, it seems sharper and better. So I will sell this one and upgrade to the new Sigma lens that should be available near the end of June. Be sure to use this link to buy it because that shows our sponsor that you support us and that helps keep unbiased reviews like this coming. As a reminder, we're one of the few big channels who has never accepted a sponsorship from a camera or lens manufacturer. And we do that so we can be brutally honest about things. Now, another lens, this is my own personal lens that I own, again, primarily for astrophotography, is the 20 millimeter F1.8 from Sony. I am still shocked by how sharp this little lens is. And certainly if I had to backpack somewhere, I'm going to be bringing the Sony. The Sony is so small, you wouldn't even notice it. Whereas the Sigma is absolutely huge, but they're completely different lenses. 20 millimeters is significantly tighter, which means I wouldn't get as much of the Milky Way and I wouldn't have as much flexibility about my composition. 14 millimeters is even more niche because it is so extremely wide angle and I'm going to be using it in fewer scenarios, but those scenarios I do use it in, I'll have put in a lot of energy into setting up the shot and I wanna make sure I get the best possible results. Like we've been planning this Aurora Borealis trip for more than a year, so if you're like me, buying a good piece of equipment to make sure that your many years of planning and training and practice pay off, well, it's totally worth it. So I'll definitely be buying the new Sigma from this link here. In the comments down below, let me know what else you want to know and if these super wide primes are useful to you. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.